Hey guys, it's Jenny. Welcome back once again to Solid Gold. Last week I did an update on the male butterfly telescope goldfish that I have living in my 75 gallon aquarium. And the week before that I did an update on the male butterfly telescopes that I have living in one of my almost 100 gallon Intex wading pools. This week we're gonna switch gears a little bit and talk about a different variety of goldfish that I keep. For years and years it was only butterfly telescope goldfish and that's it. But these days I have some other goldfish as well. I have a group of four Jeekins living in my 127 gallon black Laguna tub. I got this group of fish two months ago almost exactly to the day from Dandy Aranda's. And if you're not familiar with the Jeekin goldfish variety, it's actually not that surprising because they're pretty rare as far as goldfish varieties go. It's a type of, I would say, slimmer, longer bodied goldfish that it doesn't have quite as long of a body as, say, a common goldfish or a comet or a shabunkin. It's a little bit compressed, but not quite as much as a fancy goldfish, which is kind of like an egg-shaped body, such as the fantails, arandas, and ryukins. It's not quite that much, but it's also not quite as long as a shabunkin. I would say if there's a spectrum, like this is the uh, really egg-shaped body type of goldfish, and then the really slim body type of goldfish, like a shabunkin, the Jeekins are probably a little bit closer to this end of the spectrum. Their most defining characteristic, of course, is the tail. The tail has been described in so many different ways. I've seen it described as peacock tail, which I don't quite know where that comes from. I suppose when you're looking straight on at the fish, it kind of fans out to the side behind them like a, like a peacock, so maybe that's where that comes from. I've also seen it described as like an X shape, because when you view the fish from behind, their tail is kind of like this and then that, so kind of like an X shape. And I've also seen it referred to as a butterfly tail. Crazy, because the type of goldfish that I like the most are butterfly tail telescopes. And those fish have tails that are really spread out horizontally and they look like the outspread wings of a butterfly when viewed from above. The Jeekin, however, I could see how you could think that it looks like the outspread wings of a butterfly, but not when viewed from above, only when viewed from behind the fish. So you'd have to be looking at the fish from the side view, and then the fish would have to be swimming away from you so that you can see its back end. And then I can see how the tail kind of looks like butterfly wings. So far, I am very, very happy with my little group of four Jeekins. They are absolutely wonderful and beautiful. They had absolutely no issues after shipping. And now that it's been a full two months since I've had them, I can say that with 100% confidence. Usually after shipping you won't notice any issues start to crop up until after that two week mark which is why it's so important to quarantine your fish for at least four weeks because that gives them time to settle in and for you to really notice things that aren't going to rear their heads until later on. My fish have been in their quarantine tub for two months now. No bottom sitting like what I'm used to seeing in my more egg shaped types of goldfish and certainly no anything else either. Just a little bit skittish is all. But they have warmed up to me. They know that when I come by the tank, it means that there's about to be food. They don't swim away as quickly from me as they did at first. I am really interested to see how they will warm up to me, and I don't think that they're ever gonna become as tame as my butterfly telescopes. So I don't have any illusions about that, but I do hope that they will get a little bit more friendly. It's probably up to me as far as that goes. If I would spend some time with some cubes of gel food just holding it underwater for them, they may eventually come up and start eating from my hand, but I haven't even tried that yet. I would like to though because these are really fun fish. I'm also really excited to see how big they get and what their lifespan is like as compared to the more extravagantly modified types like the butterfly tail telescopes that I usually keep. I recently took, I guess you could say, a more serious interest into the other varieties of goldfish, especially like the the longer bodied, more pond type goldfish, like the Jeekins and Watt and I, which I also have a small group of those too, but that's for another update. So that's why I decided to get some Jeekins and I found this one on an auction one time few months back and I just had to have her. She's the biggest one that I have and she is one of the two females. She's got this beautiful clean stark paper white base with some bright orangey red spots. So I saw her in the auction, had to have her, 
clicked buy it now and yeah that was the end of that and when Ken called me to set up my date for shipping this fish I asked him if he had any other ones that he thought would be good to pair with this fish because I was interested in breeding them down the road and he found three other ones for me that I'm over the moon about there are two males and then the one original female that I picked out they're all from one bloodline and then he gave me a fourth fish, which is a female from a separate bloodline. So I have three fish from one bloodline and one fish from a different bloodline. A female and two males. And a female. Now the second bloodline is really interesting to me and actually probably more correct when you start talking about the standards of the variety because the g -keen is supposed to have a very very short peduncle. It's that little tail portion of the fish that is in between the body and the tail fin. So it's the little part that connects the tail fin to the body basically. It's called the peduncle. And in the G King goldfish it's supposed to be really really short really compressed. Three that I got from the first bloodline, they have a bit of a longer peduncle, and the one that I got from the second bloodline has a really, really short peduncle, which is actually probably more correct. The first male is mostly reddish orange with some white, and he's got red lipstick, which is so cute. <laughs> the second male I affectionately refer to as helmet head because he's got a mostly white, pretty much all white body, and then this bright red color on his head that makes it look like he's wearing a bright red helmet or that he's got like bright red hair or something. So maybe I should actually call him Carrot Top. That would be a lot cuter, wouldn't it? Carrot Top. And then the second female that I have that's from that second bloodline with the short peduncle, she is almost all white with nearly 12 point red color. 12 point red color means that the fish is all white except for the fins, the mouth, and the eyes. Everywhere is supposed to be white except for those areas, those 12 points are supposed to be a nice deep red. And this is actually what the standards for the Jikin variety call for, is a fish that has that body shape and all that, but it also has a very specific color pattern, which is that 12 point red color pattern. Obviously when you're talking about an already very rare variety, if you're trying to pinpoint a certain color pattern, it becomes even more rare and when you have those ones that have that color pattern they're extremely extremely valuable so because of that there are potential ethical concerns about these fish because some people will pluck the scales from the fish's body if it's a really really nice fish that comes super close to the 12 point red but it has some patches of red on its body, they'll actually go in and pluck those red scales and then let them regrow because usually when a scale regrows, it's going to regrow clear or with no color. So that is something that I think is overboard. It's just like, why? You know, it's already a really nice fish. Just because it's not 100% perfect, you're going to go pluck its scales out. I think that's kind of silly. So the four G-Keens that I have, they are not perfect G-Keens because they're not perfectly 12 point red, but honestly I don't care. I've only had these fish for a couple of months now and sometimes when I get a new fish I think of a good name for it right away. Sometimes I even have a name waiting for it because I have a name bank like reserved for future fish that I'm going to have, but this time it's not been like that. I don't have any idea on what to name these four fish. I would really like to go with some kind of theme. If you guys have any ideas on what kind of theme I should use for their names, please leave your suggestions in the comment section below because I think I'm needing some help in that department. All in all, I'm really happy with my group of G-Keens. I do wish that I could see them from the side because I like to appreciate my goldfish from the top and from the side if I can, but this tub doesn't really let me do that unless I dunk my underwater camera in there and then look at it on my computer, but it's just not the same, you know? So I do feel like I'm missing out on being able to fully appreciate them because I can't see them from the side. I'm really excited to see how they continue to grow and develop. I have noticed that with a closer and brighter overhead light, their red colors have really come out a lot more bright and dark, so that's pretty cool. I do hope to breed these fish in the future, but so far no breeding action has taken place. It's been a little chilly, so it's probably not the right time of year for that. Even though these are like a more rare and obscure type of goldfish variety, there have been a lot more of them recently on the Dandy Aranas auctions, so I've been still watching and like waiting for 
another perfect one that I have to have to add to my group. But right now I'm happy with my group of Jeekins as they are. I'm not, I'm not looking to add any more fish right now. <laughs> Although that could change at any time, depending on what fish I happen to see. That's about it for this week's update, guys. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for next week because I will have another update. It may be on my female butterfly telescopes that I have in a Intex waiting pool. And also don't forget that I still have my 2016 solid gold calendars available for sale. It's got an awesome picture of a beautiful butterfly telescope for every single month of the year. How cool is that? There's also a chance to enter in this giveaway, which I'm doing one giveaway every month of 2017. And only people who have purchased a calendar and mailed in their little entry card are eligible to win. You may be thinking, you know, I already have a calendar for this upcoming year, but is it a goldfish calendar? Then thanks so. Thank you guys for watching another Solid Gold video. I'll see you in the next one, and until then, stay gold. It just seems really like... It's so true. Our courage will pull us through. You teach me, and I'll teach you. Catch them all, gotta catch them all, Pokemon! <laughs> I can't do this right now. <laughs> this is not real fur. Okay? Fake. Fake fur. Just wanna point that out.